want to welcome everybody to the December 12, 2018 regular meeting of the Midcoast Community Council. Uh, will the council members please introduce themselves from my left. Dan Haggerty. Brandon Kwan. Claire Tutan. Dave Olson. Chris Johnson. Barbara Matheson. And for those who didn't know, it's an unlikely event, but somebody on the video, Former council, per, former council person Lisa Ketchum has resigned to take a seat on the San Mateo County Planning Commission. So she is no longer a council member. Uh, but we will get to that item on the agenda in a moment. Uh, Don, do you have anything to cover under the uh, Board of Supervisors report? I do. Unfortunately, uh, Ellie got here um, and uh, <laughs> gave me all my notes. Um, the uh, so Caltrans Sustainable Grant application was submitted in, on November the 30th. It's in partnership with POST, and it's an application to Caltrans, the Sustainable Transportation Planning Grant to fund a study that will assess the feasibility of eight key coastal trail gas in San Mateo County. So it's mostly a, a trail. We'll let you know when we hear back. Um, this is uh, the mid-block crossing in Moss Beach. You had asked, uh, the council had asked for us to uh, make a request for Caltrans to, uh, Caltrans to look at uh, another roundabout at, uh, I think this is a roundabout. No, wait a minute, this is different. This is, no, this is a different, <laughs> sorry, this is a, it's the letter you sent us about the uh, accesses, the mid-block accesses. So we sent that letter to Caltrans ac asking that they assess the limiting mid block <coughs> crossings along Highway 1 in West Moss Beach between Lancaster and uh, California. Um, my, my guess is, uh, frankly, when they, send, when they get it, they'll actually send something back and say, well, you know, the county wants to you know, pay for and initiate a project. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll uh, watch and see what they have to say, but uh, we'll see. Parallel trail is very close to 100% design. One of the uh, things that happened was the Sam put a, a main force line in an area that <coughs> was somewhat different than the approved plans. And uh, because of that, it requires some of that. We have to have a, a bridge across a kind of a creek or embankment. And uh, because of where they put their force main, that's going to require us to change the footings on that bridge. In any case, we are working with the BKF Brian Kang this fall. Um, and uh, we have to do finalize our designs to account for the fact that the sewer line is a place that is a, where it's not supposed to be, but it is, and so you have to deal with the, you know, you have to deal with that, which it is. So, so in any case, we have we do also have a grant. We did we did put together about 3.5 million funding for it, but it's actually to actually build this in the neighborhood of about five million. So we're looking for a grant to see if we could uh, put together the rest of the funding. If we can't, I think we'll probably. Um, you know, just do parts of it instead of doing the whole part of the whole trail and then we'll wait until we get some additional funding. The 3.5 million actually comes from the county. Uh, what I've done uh, in one of our past budgets is I asked for some additional money on, on Murano Road. And the problem with Murano Road is that we did fix the uh, R RSP, basically the rock slope protection, and we did fix the road as well. And we were looking at a bigger project to preserve the houses and the roadway and all the utilities. And it's um, basically sheet piling. But we, in, you know, in contact with the Coastal Commission, it looked like our application for a grant was going to take years, so I shifted the money out and put it over into the parallel trail. Yeah. Um, and I figured that we would be able to get that money back at some later point. But for now, that's where we came up with additional funding. But it does require at least the projects uh, always turn out to be way more expensive than anticipated. And this is, so we, we're looking for some additional grants to fill in the hole. Um, relatively confident that we, it's actually a pretty good project. Um, something that the community has been asking for for many years. We actually worked, started working on this years ago. And we're pretty close, pretty close to actually having 100% design. That would mean the construction would start when? Well, you know, we had hoped to be able to start construct something around there. I didn't think it was that funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, we had hoped to be able to, you know, 
should know in a couple of months about that grant that if we don't get it, I think we're going to try and do, we would like to start construction in the summertime. It could be late, late fall, too. Mm -hmm. okay, great. Well, thank you very much for securing that funding. Anything else to report? Oh, I'm sure there is. You know, we're in a sort of a downtime where, you know, it's getting close to Christmas and New Year. Uh, we start our budget process over again. Um, we're working with the, uh, Dave Plan wants to come up, Dave Plan myself, because I, I invited myself to be on this committee. He has a committee to create what's called a water committee. We have a lot of, on the base side, a lot of uh, creek that essentially floods. San Francisco Creek, Belmont Creek, San Carlos, uh, San Carlos has a creek. Pola has a creek, uh, and they affect uh, all those bayfront cities. And then, of course, on the coast side, you have lots of uh, coastal erosion. And so, so we uh, decided that the only way to be able to deal with coast side erosion on one end and on the, on the bayfront side, uh, sea level rise, is to have a unified uh, agency so we can't compete with federal funding. Because we really probably need uh, not just you know, 10 million, it's just going to be hundreds of millions to be able to protect all those bayfront properties. Coastline is somewhat different that uh, you know, we do want to do uh, asset protection, but it's mostly houses. We don't really have, well, you do have some sewer treatment plants or a sewer treatment plant, but we don't really have all the corporations. On the Bayfront side, we have uh, about 100 million people who are at risk, as well as uh, some of the largest companies in the country. We have more Fortune 500 companies in San Mateo County than we do in San Francisco, which is kind of a shock. And uh, the county continues to grow. In some ways, I wish it goes someplace else, but uh, it, you know, I can't make those decisions for corporations. So. All right, great. All right. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can tell you some more. We have a seat <laughs> hospital. Oh, um, yeah. We do think that there's a bidder. Um, and what they have, they call it a stalking horse. And uh, Santa Clara built for the hospitals in Santa Clara County. We, we are kind of surprised because they're paying, they're paying basically a quarter of a billion for them. Uh, we believe that they're losing more money than Seton in Daly City. The one that actually Seton Coastside does not lose money. Um, but uh, we know that they're losing in a neighborhood of about uh, 40 million a year. And so the uh, billionaire who owns the houses of the the properties came to us and asked for us to give him $20 million a year, and he said no, and that's why he decided to go to file for bankruptcy. But I can't, this guy's one of the richest people in the country, and we're not about to give him $20, billion, 20 million a year. So, uh, but they, what they did, so when they went into bankruptcy, there's sort of an interesting process that Santa Clara is buying there for a quarter of a billion. They're losing a lot of money on it, just like Seton, it's about 30 million a year. But Santa Clara, they have a bigger population now. They're three times our size, and so they, knew they do need to have additional hospital beds. We, and, and see, we're not interested in buying Seaton. We, we've already got a county hospital, and we already have a string of, of, of uh, clinics. You know, we probably would be interested in the coast side, but only because of the skilled nursing beds. Uh, we have about 116 skilled nursing beds. Uh, Seaton in Daly City has about 33 acres. We think it's really, uh, it's actually a nice, site for a real estate deal, but we're not we're not real estate you know promoters, so we're going to let somebody else uh, come up with uh, look at it. And we understand there are two uh, bidders. One was the original bidder that the attorney general scared off with the requirements of having ten year requirement of maintaining all of their services uh, without making any changes to any of their contracts or service levels. So we think that they are bidding now under the feeling that if they go through the bankruptcy court, the attorney general's requirements will be negated. Um, and, uh, you know, the amount of money that they're talking about buying those four hospitals, the remaining four hospitals, is just astronomical. So we'll, we'll see what happens. But I think somebody's going to end up buying the hospital. We'll see what happens. But uh, we hope that, uh, you know, you know, we hope they're credible. Two agencies there, they are known for a turn uh, around operations. But turning around seats in Daly City is very difficult because it's about an eight story hospital. And when we did a master plan study of it, we thought that the only way to make it 
feasible would be to, like a layer cake, take, take off the top four, four, four floors and then build a smaller hospital for about 300 million. And we just don't have the capacity to do that. So uh, that that's, that's occurring. <coughs> sort of a moving target. Yeah. This is something that we've considered before. We had to see people come down and talk with us before, and, and we conveyed to them our desire to have medical services uh -huh. on the well, Big Coast. So they were maybe we may have to talk about that. They were somewhat receptive because they had indicated to us that they were interested in expanding services. Mm -hmm. Here? We, they did, yeah. They said because there's property in Seton Coast, like there's property in the back that uh, they, you know, they, they were talking about expanding their service, but uh, then shortly thereafter, they declared bankruptcy. So I don't think they're very credible. Well, if the county takes it over, they get. Um, I wanted to ask a question about the trail branch you were talking about, the uh -huh. parallel trail. Can, can you hold on for just a second? Sure. Yeah. Uh -huh. Go ahead. I don't know if this is appropriate. Well, I, it may not be. OK. Make, just make it we, we The community would like to have services behind besides just the step maintained. Yeah. Yes, I think we got that feedback mm -hmm. last time. All right. Well, thank you, Don. Um, yeah. Go ahead, Deborah. Uh, okay. Come up to the podium, please, so you picked up on oh, the sure. video. I'm just wondering, um, the parallel trail on the grass you were talking about, uh -huh. How far north do those go? And when will Montara be connected to, actually, when will we have trails up to Montara? Is there any plans for that at all? Um, so it actually goes up to El Granado. Um, mm -hmm. It would connect from El Granado all the way up to Half the Bay. The next stage of it is, uh, you know, <laughs> I have four more years. I doubt you're going to see it four years. Mm -hmm. We can start some of the engineering on it, but you know it's taken us like eight years I to know. get to this point. So it's really, okay. it's really complicated. Yeah. Any other questions or comments from the council? Yeah. Come on up, Kathy. Thank you. Kathy Slater Carter Montero. Um, the land in back of Seton has a major earthquake fault running through it. It was mapped in the county hazard maps when the LCP was done in, uh, and adopted in the late 70s, 1980. So it's something that I think that's one of the reasons they haven't, people or corporations or agencies haven't done improvements on Seton in the past is because the earthquake improvement standards would be pretty major. Like I say, it is on the county maps, it is in planning, and so you may want to um, consider that. I, I am pretty sure that's why it hasn't been developed. Thank you. Anything else from the audience or council? All right, then. Oh, yeah. That was a good question. <coughs> um, you know, the, the sad incident up there in uh, Paradise, um, uh, I remember, uh, four or five years ago, I guess, Caltran, uh, the Ca um, Cal Fire, you know, basically educated us in how, you know, it's kind of a uh, predicament we're in here with all the eucalyptus trees. Since the campfire um, and all the other fires in California, has it come up at all in the county to, you know, look at this, what, we, what, what can we do to thin out some of these um, uh, um, eucalyptus? Yeah, it has. It has come up. Yeah. And, uh, and with the, well, we I sort of mapped out uh, some of the like four major hazard areas. Two of them are on the coastside. One is in Quarry Park, and uh, our parks department, that's actually where our parks department, and they are getting some additional equipment. It's sort of interesting when they get it. But to invite you to come down. And they, it's not just a chip, but this is a larger machine that actually can chew above a tree. Um, and it's going to take some training of our staff. But we worked with, uh, we're, myself and Dave Pine have a couple of different uh, groups that we're talking to. One is uh, called the, the San Francisco County Fire Safe Council and asking them about 
uh, fuel loads. And uh, we, we are looking at, uh, you know, we've I think we've replaced all of our, fu our, our fire equipment. Uh, the Happy Bay has, and the county has as well, and we all have Cal Fire, which I, I think is probably good for us because we do. You know, they have they have some major equipment from air airplanes to helicopters that local fire departments don't really have, but. Uh, so we, you know, so that's the, there's the, the uh, fire, um, what they say, uh, in any case, what they look at is the Fire Safe Council looks at areas and they, they work together with all the local agencies and volunteers and uh, chew up all the, the, fu the fuel, basically. And they get grants to do that as well. Then there's another group called the Fire Chief, we're working with them as well. And there's a, we have a, University professor who's interested in trying to figure out some kind of a way of an early warning system. So that's another um, initiative that we're working on. And then with the Cal Fire, we asked them to come up with a plan to uh, bring in regular crews. There's, you, there's two ways to do it. One is the CDC crews that uh, come in and do a lot of, uh, you know, the president talks about raking. <laughs> But what we were talking about is actually going in and cleaning up areas where there's a lot of fuel. And at the same time, we also like that new equipment that we're buying for our parks department actually chew up trees and kind of thin things up. Now, you can't take down a big tree with that, that machinery, but what happens with eucalyptus is like a noxious weed, and so you get all kinds of shoots, and those are the ones that are the most dangerous. So, um, um, the other possibility, if we don't do the CDC crews, we could also hire seasonal firefighters for nine months. We are closing one of our youth camps in Camp Glenwood, and so we, that is a potential place where we could actually house them uh, when they're doing the work for Cal Fire. So you know, we are pretty actively uh, going out to looking at areas that we think are potential you know, hazards, and especially the coast side. Um, one of the areas is my area where I live, um, Emerald Hills. There's other on Highway 84, um, and I can't, I don't know off the top of my head, I don't know, I know there's a fourth one as well, I can't think of that where that's at as, as well, but I know that uh, Corey Park is something that really concerns us, and especially El Granada, because, you know, there's a lot of houses that have been built up at the top, and you have all these, uh, you know, you have a very difficult roads, and uh, lots of eucalyptus trees, and so we're really very concerned about that. We also want to work with PG&E. I mean, we're not going to be able to underline, underground those wires, but we want to make sure that uh, they are removing all the hazards from around their uh, power poles. So, yeah, you're right. We have thought about that. We are concerned about it, and um, I think we're being as proactive as we can. Has there been we're also going to hire a, by the way, it's called the Resource Conservation District. We're going to request that we hire a forester. <coughs> We'd like to have a programmatic process to uh, streamline permitting. You know, every time we do something, you've got to get a permit from, from agency. So we'd like to have a programmatic overlay on all the areas that we think are potential fire risks so that we can, you know, don't have to really get dragged into and bogged down by a permitting process. Has there, has there been any uh, discussion at all about, you know, maybe a plan of like, uh, you know, not clear cutting, but you know, s in sections, you know, like every other section, like remove, replant, well, and then in years no, down no, the road. No, not necessarily replant, but actually one of the things that would be to have a process of, uh, it's one thing for us, for example, to go and uh, clear out a lot of the brush. But if you don't ever follow up on it, in a few years it's all bad. Exactly. So we have to develop a plan that is more long term, long -term than we've yeah. ever done in the past. And uh, you know that's my intent is to make sure that when we you know we beefed up our fire departments in terms of staffing and equipment, and now it's really time to actually start focusing on those areas that we think are potential hazards. And, I, and there's a, one of my constituents in Elder that I asked that we meet with her and her neighbors. And so I talked to our fire, the county fire chief, and we are going to meet with some of the neighbors in that particular area and talk to them about you know what we think are fire risks and things that they can do around their own. A lot of the, what you, you know, you really can protect your own home to some extent by making sure that you're not, you know, you're, you're, you know you, 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 your fuel load around your home is actually removed. 
safe distance. Now that doesn't necessarily, in some areas, you, know, that you still are at risk, but it, it certainly limits your risk. Thank you. Thank you. That is an important subject in a lot of people's it minds. Yeah. All right. I'm going to uh, move on to our next agenda item then, which is our recognition of council member Lisa Kishin and her years of service to the community and the council, both. Um, and as I said earlier in the meeting, Lisa has moved on to the Planning Commission. We're expecting great things out of Lisa. <laughs> and uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll wish her luck on uh, achieving this. Um, you know, I, I came on the council in part because Lisa convinced me to do it. I would not probably have run otherwise. Um, so thank you very much for that, Lisa. And uh, I have continued to be amazed at all the things that you have done for the community, not least of which is uh, digitizing all of the records and then putting them on the website, making it a huge, huge resource for the whole Coast site. So thank you very much. Anybody else want to say anything? Yes. Uh, Lisa? You and I came on uh, the council at the same time, and uh, so sort of, um, I'm very aware of all the work that you've done for this council. Uh, it's been a great time working with you. I want to thank you for all of the phone calls you accepted from me and just <laughs> talking about things. And, um, you're just um, <clears throat> going to be an incredible asset of this, this council that we're greatly and uh, wish you the very best at the uh, planning commission I know you're going to do a great job there and um, um, look forward to seeing you once in a while <laughs> yeah you will <laughs> yeah we expect that uh, Chris <coughs> yeah so Lisa also uh, I guess recruited me or, or introduced me to the MCC and, and convinced me to run. I'm so glad she did um, from my own experience, but for the opportunity to see how it's supposed to be done. Um, I still don't quite know how to all the pieces put together, but Lisa does and she's put the time in and that's why she's been so valuable to this community and will be so valuable going on to the county because she, she has spent the time, she knows where to go, how to phrase things, what the key words and phrases are, what the key points are, how to organize those, what we're dealing with in terms of like technical and official language and process. And uh, more and more it just seems like process breaks down and, and I call it the idiocracy, it just kind of like the standards go down. But and, th and that's been my frustration is I want the standards to be down here so I can just throw something together and like do a presentation. But s what, this is the way it ha needs to be done. And I'm really thankful for my time to watch, you know, the, I guess the word is craft, the craft of being a community advocate and being able to be successful at it and get things done. And that's important. And we need more people like Lisa um, involved in our community. So thank you, Lisa. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Joe. Anybody? Well, I'm the same. Uh, Lisa recruited me. <laughs> and uh, you've been a great mentor to me, and I hope you're not going to stop. I can still call you and text you. But uh, I respect you a great deal, and I think the community does too, and best of luck to you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you didn't recruit me. <laughs> <laughs> but you approved. <laughs> and... Um, <coughs> you've, 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 you're, you're the face of the community, and we're never going to replace you, but hopefully we can carry on. And uh, thank you for everything, uh, and thank you for the website. Well, I don't, well, I have a lot of here, and I have a farewell address, so I don't want to say everything here. Yes, I have a farewell address. Please, everyone, stay to hear it, <laughs> um, including you, Don. Um, yeah. And uh, so I, will, I want to thank you for... Uh, um, for being the first member to talk to me when I first got elected and uh, informing me uh, about everything what the council does. Um, I was just only a 22 year old. I'm still a 20, 20 something year old and you know I'm still young and I still 
have, I still don't have the depth of knowledge uh, as much as you do, but, uh, but uh, I mean, the in, you carry a lot of institutional knowledge of the MCC, and, and uh, it will be a very great loss, and uh, we, we hope you can still uh, give uh, counsel and advice to this uh, council um, and uh, to uh, guide uh, future members. Thank you for all your work. I just have to add something here, this business of me recruiting y'all. <laughs> it was Laura and I together that did this, and anybody that signed up to run for election, we met with you, and or we met with you and said, come on, do this, and uh, uh, Laura and Dan and I came on the council together and, and seven years ago, and I certainly miss her, and uh, so yeah, she was part of that. Um, should I continue to say what I have to say? Uh, so I don't have a slide presentation for you tonight or a draft letter for you to consider, but um, I uh, have some news. Uh, today, the Planning Commission uh, approved the Arbor Lane blocktop project with the condition of no future armoring, yes. either on the Ocean Bluff or the Creek Bluff. This is, uh, this is what we asked for. This is something the county had never done before. All the uh, armoring prohibitions that were put on shoreline projects were done on appeal to the Coastal Commission up until now, since 99 until now. So uh, that's exciting. I think, um, you know, as I look back and think of the, the things that jump out at me that I feel that, oh, you know, I, I really was involved in getting that done. And so this was nice to happen today. And I think um, other things that always come to mind were, of course, with the support of Supervisor Horsley, getting the 7th Street fence removed and getting the possibility of roundabouts in Moss Beach instead of traffic signals. And that this kind of thing doesn't happen without the supervisor's support. And. Uh, and my advice to you, basically, you know, from what I've learned, so that's the ultimate goal, to get the supervisor on your side, and basically to do that, council need, and the community, hopefully, need to reach a consensus so that he will then uh, help out. And uh, so that's important to consider, try and reach consensus. Um, and so we talk about, to the website here. So we talk about loss of institutional memory with council and county staff uh, turnover. And my, so my effort with the MCC website was to try to collect this institutional memory in one place so you can learn from and build on what has gone before. Uh, and uh, just a side note, if you wanted a community volunteer, I'm willing to make not the front page, but the, the news post, but the the archives pages, the issues pages, I'm willing to keep those up to date as long as you're still on Squarespace 5, as long as you want me to do that. Um, and uh, like I said in my letter, it's been a privilege to serve with you and my best wishes for you going forward, continuing with this, with advocating for the community, for the county and uh, engaging the community and all that. Thank you for your trust and support. Thank you again, Lisa. And before you went to the Pardon? Who swore you went to the planning commission? Uh, it happened before the meeting. It was okay. the, um, Sherry. Um, Sherry. not Janet. Yeah, Sherry. Yeah, there you go. Oh, Sherry. Yeah. Um, I want to say before I take any comments from the audience that we will, uh, County be publishing the vacancy notice probably in early January. This seemed like a bad time of year to be doing it. So in early January, the applications will be open. And uh, for those of you who've seen today's Halfman Bay Review, um, Clay Lambert put out a plea to people who are not, quote unquote, old white men and women <laughs> to apply. So <laughs> to please keep that in mind. <laughs> I'm sorry, to, to run for, for various boards. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Diversity. <laughs>
We're, we're a step ahead with Brandon. <laughs> but I'm leaving. <laughs> okay, uh, yes, Catherine. Catherine Slater Carter. I want to thank Lisa for all the work she's done. Um, when I started um, attending the council and then when I was on the council, our biggest, our biggest problem was finding out what had been done and what had and why it had been done. And Paul and I spent countless hours going through that. And to have it in a single place is awesome. Um, and thank you for being willing to continue that. That's history is is one of the most important parts of being able to go forward and, and know you're not going to stumble too badly. I want to thank Don for appointing Lisa. Thank you very much. You've done a lot for our community. This is just one more instance in, of your um, caring about our community. And I, I will say for all of the MCC members here and those coming and to those who are watching from the past that um, when we started, it was like the Board of Supervisors didn't really want us here. And then there were several efforts to actually turn the um, MCC into an appointed body, appointed by the, mid, by the Board of Supervisors. And for an agent, for a community, um, for, for a uh, organization made up of volunteers that, who are supposed to be representing the community, it seemed a bit of a um, problematic to have the, the members appointed by the Board of Supervisors. It would seem their loyalty would be separate from, those, from that to the community and more towards the Board of Supervisors. And so it was the community who was able to come forward in some very well attended meetings and say, no, this is our organization. It represents us and we think it's important. And I will say the um, work that the council has done and, and is doing is no less important than ever. Um, the council has done some absolutely amazing things for this community and I think we should all be grateful. But as you say, it is working as a team with the community and with the Board of Supervisors. So thank you to you all. A special thanks to Lisa and to Don. Thank you, Kathy. Um, I don't want to leave out the other two people who are leaving us. Um, Brandon has cut his teeth on politics with us, and uh, hopefully we'll be moving on to greater things as time goes on. And Chris has been here five years, I believe. You've been chair twice? Oh, only once. Only once. That was enough. <laughs> that was enough. <laughs> it's hard. Yeah. It's hard. And, and Chris has contributed a lot of heart to this organization. Um, and we'll miss you as well. Uh, Chris is going to be still representing or working with us with the dog committee and with the CDRC. And with the Adopt a Highway. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know three people are leaving. Because I'd like to make some comments myself to that. Yeah. With Brandon uh, being uh, the youngest member, and I'm uh, really glad to see a young person step up. Uh, I, I, I know you ran for, uh, I guess, the, for the County Board of Education. Yeah. It's this district, but it's not really district one. Yeah. It's actually county one. Yeah. I'm saying. Mm -hmm. You actually did really well. Uh, uh, first yeah. Time. I actually got the same percentage as Marshall Tuck, so there was a down ballot effect. <laughs> well, you did really well, so you know I really appreciate that. Thank you know, you. It takes guts and courage to actually stick yourself out there mm -hmm. and, uh, and you know, try to make a difference, and I really mm -hmm. appreciate that you did that. Mm -hmm. um, Chris, you helped us with uh, Surface Beach, and that actually worked out really well with the crowd as well. I think no one thought it held up more, uh, better than people anticipated. In fact, to be frank with you, it held up even better than I anticipated, at least with the stairs and the railing. Uh, and that's actually one of the most successful projects, and you're really heavily involved in it. I know you really care passionately about the, the uh, coast site. And um, I, I wish you had uh, decided to stay, but you did, and that's fine. And, you know, you can, I'm sure you'll be you know, help the council and the coast site and other roles, like you said, with dogs. And that's kind of an interesting one, fact that for people who don't know, it's, you couldn't take a dog in any single one of our parks. So I have two dogs, and I can't take any of my dogs into any county parks, but now I can, but I gotta have to keep them on a leash. And before, you know, if I let them off, if I took them into like the, the uh, uh, 
Supreme Court headlines or stuff like that, it's illegal. And people know that I'm, just, uh, I'm a supervisor. I can't, I can't do it. In my neighborhood, uh, on one occasion, I did. I had this really wonderful dog. And she was really great. She would stay with her 10 feet again. I had a and, and the neighbor was walking around. And some kid said, you're the sheriff. I was the sheriff. Said, you're the sheriff. You're violating the law. So I knew that I, there was no way that I could do something like that. And somebody said, no way. And they said, look, he did it. Yeah. So uh, and I'm, really sure happy, I'm really happy now that I can go and at least a couple of parts with my dog. And I hope that uh, we'll have an off leash dog park somewhere as well. So, uh, and that, that is, uh, that's tough to And you're passionate, and I, I think I look for great things from you. And, and Lisa, you. I was really glad that I've, I've had three different planning commissions all from the coast. And my first one turned out to be very pro development, and it got me into a lot of times where I had to reverse them. And uh, so then I replaced them unceremoniously. And I picked up a uh, person who was actually part of the, uh, uh, the tunnel campaign, Joey Coast and Tucker, and then Joey's now moved on to. The Peninsula Open Space District, and uh, I want to have another coast person who is thoughtful, understands the coast, and I couldn't think of anybody better than you. And I know that you're up there in Pillow Point Bluffs, picking out all of this in base of uh, weeds on your own without any help. And I know that uh, you know this area like um, like that, uh, like no other, and you're also relentless <laughs> and persistent. And fair. And I thought you'd make an excellent commission, and I'm sure you will. So I, was, uh, I actually went into the audience today and I took a picture of her, put her on my Facebook. But I unfortunately, was you know what I did? I, was, I, got, I, I Unfortunately, the picture of her has the wrong name tag because I, oh, was the way in which it was sla slanted. So your name is now something different. <laughs> <laughs> Controversial today. <laughs> That's not to say cities don't. Cities are controversial too on planning commission, but you know, they, they, they have lots of development issues, but most of the development really occurs, the big development occurs in the city. So, but in any case, it's, uh, I'm glad you're there, and uh, it's, uh, it's going to be great having you there. And I also want to say, um, you know, Brandon uh, really stretched me when he came on the council. He had a lot of things that he wanted to accomplish, and he and I worked together trying to figure out how many of them could be done. And as it turned out, we didn't really proceed very far on, on any of them, but um, a lot of great ideas that he brought, a lot of energy. So thank you very much, Brandon. And Chris, you know, I don't have to thank you. You know. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you. All Dave, right. Dave, well, yeah, I'd oh. also like to echo uh, Claire's and, and yours uh, comments. Chris, Brian, thank you very much for you. You know, your, your effort and mm -hmm. your sweat and tears and all that. Some tears, yeah. Uh, <laughs> really appreciate it. It's, it's, it's shouldn't be um, not said that you know the, the commitment and the work is you know it's very commendable and, and uh, you know needed. The community needs people like you to. Be here. So thank you for all the time that you have had here. Thank you, Dan. I you. know you were stressed out being chair, <laughs> but really I think you were the best chair we had, and you are so articulate and passionate and spontaneous. And I remember when you gave that speech at the ribbon cutting at Surfer Speech. I, I mean, if I could do that, I mean, just. <laughs> hey, mid coast. And he started in. I guess it's your. Uh, what is it? Uh, the call and response. <laughs> no, the what we you used to, to do before. <laughs> <laughs> the, oh, um, improv. Improv. Yeah, yeah that. You're good. You're good. Yeah. yeah. Improv.
improv training, it helps <laughs> in life. <laughs> All right, so the council will now take a brief recess for refreshments. We have cookies, gluten-free cake. And then I do my farewell. And then, yeah, you can do your farewell, and uh, then we'll do the swearing in. So come on up if you want something to drink or eat. Okay, so we're actually going to continue item two and give the departing council members a chance to um, say their farewell and uh, whatever they want. So we'll start with Brandon. Thank you. Oh, hold on. Don't worry, I'm just going to adjust. We, we have a technical hold. No worries, so I'm just going to adjust the direction here. <laughs> You set up my uh, papers too. <laughs> we, we have one. It's, about yeah. to <laughs> it's right around the corner. Success, we're good to go. Okay, Steve, you ready to roll? Yeah, we're good. Okay, we're back uh, after our technical pause. Uh, Brandon, go. <coughs> I want to first uh, thank everyone and the Mid Coast for their support. Uh, thank you for giving me a chance to serve you. Thank you. When I was elected two years ago, I promised to serve the Mid Coast and follow my duties. I have fought to keep the rural essence of this community, and I have advocated for fiscal conservative prudency in regards to your tax dollars. I have completed my duties and never missed a council meeting my term of office. I now depart with no regrets to open new doors and whatever the future holds for me. To the supervisor, I thank you for your service to the Mid Coast. It was an honor to work with you. I hope you continue to listen to the Mid Coast residents. <coughs> thank you. To my colleagues, it was a pleasure to serve alongside all of you. Although at times we do dissent, we do not let our disagreements disrupt our work for the Mid Coast. To my successors, um, <laughs> congratulations, Godspeed, and welcome to the council. The, the oath uh, you are about to take, like the rest of us here, is not just to defend the Constitution, but it is a sacred promise to the people of the Mid Coast, and it must be upheld with fidelity. Here is an advice to heed. Do not vote for an item because you want to be unanimous or in a majority. Do not vote because you perceive the item to be popular. Vote because you truly believe in your cause. Vote because it is the right course of action. If you follow your conscience and stand your ground, you will succeed. To the populace of the Mid Coast, <laughs> again, thank you for giving me the opportunity to serve you these two years. We must stay united as one Mid Coast to preserve our rural identity. Concepts such as by district Elections are incompatible with the nature of our community. In order to defend our treasured lands from outside interests, we must have a cohesive voice. Posterity looks upon us to pass down the Midcoast unblemished. The Midcoast cannot be divided, it cannot be annexed, and it cannot perish. The Midcoast will always be the Midcoast and shine as the brightest jewel by the shore. Do not fear. Have faith. Have faith in yourself, your neighbors, and the community. Your faith will create willpower so almighty it will overwhelm any challenges or antagonistic intrigues and bear fruits of success. You are worthy of a great Midcoast community, and I am confident in Providence you will persevere. Long live the Midcoast, and thank you. Thank you.
Thank you, Brandon. Yes. Yeah, follow that up. <laughs> Brandon, you should have let me go first. <laughs> Uh, okay. Well, uh, yes, Brandon, yes. Um, I also want to say thank you very much. It's really been an honor and a privilege to serve on this uh, council because we represent the entire Midcoast, all five unincorporated communities. <clears throat> the Midcoast is very important to me. It's my home. It's where my child is born and growing up. Um, and so to be an elected official for this group uh, really it has been important to me. I also want to say I really want to thank my colleagues in the community. During the five years that I was on this council, I think it distinguished itself, the council, as a increasingly ever more credible body um, by virtue of its professionalism, uh, its respect for speakers, for co fellow council members, regardless of position. Um, there was just a level of professionalism that that I need when I'm associating with people. And that doesn't mean you have to be the best. It just means that, that you treat people with respect and courtesy and dignity, and you try to move the ball forward for the greatest good. So I really uh, treasure my time on the, c the council for that. Uh, I want to start or end where I started, which was on the campaign trail. I had a thing where I said, I've been to all 50 states, and I've driven to 49 of them. And the reason that that is important, and it's still important, and it's ever more important now after five years on this council is, it's because I have seen a lot of different places, different communities, rich communities, poor communities, big communities, small communities, communities that have figured it out, communities that haven't, coastal communities, inland communities, desert communities, all kinds. And the reason that I feel I wanna mention that again is I just want to say, all, with all due respect to everybody involved, I feel that the coast side, the mid coast, excuse me, the mid coast is underserved. Okay, and that is after having driven to 49 of the 50 states and been to the other one as well. I think it's a legitimate statement, and I believe that it to be true that the mid coast is underserved. Again, I've been to a lot smaller communities, a lot poorer communities that have a lot of the things that we do not have. And I think that we should have. And those things include a community center, a homeless shelter, library services on the mid coast where you don't have to drive south of 92 on a Saturday to get something, a, a stable hospital situation. We hear that they're filing for bankruptcy, um, a comprehensive school busing program, safe crossings to get across the highway, a community pool, an end to end bike path from. Miramar Road to, to Montera. I've, again, I've been to all 50 states. There, these things are everywhere in every community. We don't have them. Supervisor Horsley even said today, we have more Fortune 500 companies in San Mateo County than San Francisco does. Why do we not have these things? Okay, one, there are two reasons we're underserved. One, I feel that we're underserved by county, and that is to some extent understandable. We have 13,000 people in our area here on the mid coast. We're in a far flung geographical region that's separated from a lot of things. The county has a lot on its plate. Okay, but we still don't have those things I just mentioned. I think we could. And again, supervisor knows my position on this. I cite Gray Whale Cove project as an example of something that to me is not, is not serving us in the way that I think we should be served. That, to me, that's the wrong project there, <clears throat> excuse me. It could be different and in my opinion better and that would serve everybody better, visitors and residents alike. So that's an example in my opinion being underserved by the Board of Supervisors. But coast side, mid coast, hear me out. The five people from the community that are here today and anybody that might be listening, we are underserved by our community. And I say that being a member of this community and feeling great pride in it, there are five people, five civilians from the mid coast here today, five, to see out Lisa Ketchum, probably the, the greatest MCC member ever, and to welcome in two more members. And there's five people here, the supervisors here. There's five people here, a chance to talk to the supervisor. There's five people here. In the past meetings, there's been three people, one person. I was at a meeting a couple nights ago to deal with 
Parks and Recreation in, in El Granada, two people at the meeting. This doesn't get things done. This doesn't get the attention of the Board of Supervisors, okay? That we are a conduit back and forth, the MCC. The public needs to come and, and make statements so that it can pass through the MCC to the supervisors and they can hear it. They're not hearing enough and enough to, to overcome our geographic isolation and our small numbers. We have to make voices known. When I first came on the council, there was an event that gave me great hope about what this community could do. And it still can be an example. And that is right when I was coming on the council, Moss Beach Park um, was accidentally sold or, or sold and shouldn't have been or didn't want, people didn't want it to. The community rallied. There was a meeting here where there was literally people out the door that spoke their two minutes for a couple of hours. And the supervisor was here. And the supervi supervisor, Horsley specifically, jumped in on that one, rever had the sale reversed. And we still have that park because of the community involvement that got the attention of the supervisors. So I say to you, anybody that might be listening, you, it's, it's up to you. Okay, we need only two people. Let me just give me some, sorry, two, two more minutes and I'll be done. A couple of examples. There was no elections for the MCC this year because only the minimum number of candidates for the open spots ran. Um, Leonard Warren, who has served for 21 years as an elected official on the Midcoast, is stepping away. After 21 years, I can't even imagine, five years, and I feel pretty exhausted. But if we all put in five years, that, that would be enough. Um, Measure M, there was a, a ton of comments on Nextdoor and other complaints about the $99 million bond measure for Cabrillo Unified School District. And yet, when the MCC hosted a candidates forum for the CUSD board, there were 13 people here, 13 people. If I had five bucks for every comment on Nextdoor complaining about it, I could afford to keep doing this. Uh, I wouldn't have to work. Um, so, but there were 13 people here when there were candidates who were for the board who were going to be making decisions about the CUSD budget going forward. That's why it's not working. If you have a problem with the traffic or the development, that's why it's not working. Get somebody. Find a neighbor, somebody that you think would do a good job. Get them involved. Come to meetings. Put down the social media. Put down the Netflix and come to these meetings because this is where it's happening. And I just, um, I, I hope that more people get involved. Michelle is with her child right now, but she is new to the community and she's already jumping in. One last thing. I kept track of my hours this year, just, just curious, as an MCC member. Very conservative numbers, because I, 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 I just wanted to get a good sense. Uh, this year, which was a regular year for me in terms of action on the MCC, 124 hours. So, and I would imagine that the chair Somebody like Lisa, you can easily double or triple that. Okay, so that is a significant time sink or time commitment. For myself, 453 hours total of volunteer service this year, and I've loved every second of it. I would love to double that amount of volunteer service, and I wish that other people would join me. Thank you, MCC, Supervisor Horsley, <coughs> Lisa. <coughs> um, it's been a great five years, and I look forward to the rest of my life here. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Move back to our regular agenda. Public comment. I have two speaker slips. Uh, Deborah Lardy, followed by uh, Catherine Slater Carter. I'm Deborah Lardy from Montara, and um, I'm one of several residents of Montara and Moss Beach who think that we could be doing a better job of enforcing the noise abatement procedures that for the tra air traffic coming out of the Half Moon Bay Airport. We are north of the airport, and a lot of the, the departing planes, because the wind blows out of the north, end up going in our direction. Um, there is a couple of abatement procedures. One is that um, they are supposed to avoid flying over homes, but they don't do that. They regularly circle over Montara and Moss Beach at very low altitudes, um, leisurely. I don't know if they think it's like you know a fun thing to do, but 
this is not um, permitted and they do it anyhow and this is not um, enforced. Um, <clears throat> Another, th another procedure is that it says that there's supposed to be no inter We've been observing the traffic coming and going from the airport, and um, it's, there are not supposed to be any intersection takeoffs. The airport in Half Moon Bay has a very long runway. It's twice as long as the one in San Carlos. So if the planes taxied, if they're taking off to the north and they taxi to the south end of the runway, they have this extremely long runway, they could gain their altitude by the time they got to the end of the long runway and make their turn over the green space there, which is at the end of the airport. But instead what they do is they take off in the middle of the runway or down at the end, they end up going low over the homes, and then again meandering down the coast and not avoiding homes like they're supposed to. So we would like the, um, to ask for the help of the MCC and Supervisor Horsley in getting some changes made to how the, the procedures are being enforced. And um, they're also very old. They been, haven't been updated in decades, and they're outdated. They're not very clearly written. We feel like have, redoing them could also help. But I don't want to wait 10 years for that to happen. I think there's some simple things that could be done right now with how they're using the runway and enforcing people that are using the airport. I understand that the FAA controls who's in the air, but this traffic is actually using the runways. They're not just in the air. So I think that the county, as the uh, management of the, of the airport, could have some influence on who's using the runways and how they're using them. The, um, the airport minimum standard says that the county is supposed to um, work cooperatively with the communities and reduce the noise impact of the airport. So this is actually documented in the minimum standards. And I think that if um, there was a better effort to take a look at what's happening and, and make it better for all of us, I would be a lot happier. It's really, it's really, um, it's horrible to live under this traffic when they're doing it all day long. We can't talk in our yards. I think, you know, it's so loud when they're at 500 feet, they're so, really so Deborah, low. You're, going you're over running over. long. So. Okay, so that's it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So I would suggest, uh, we obviously can't take that up today, but you gather uh, a few other interested parties, mm -hmm. uh, cite the appropriate sections of the rules, uh, talk to the Airline Pilots Association at Half Moon Bay Airport, and uh, then we can bring it to the MCC if you can't resolve it. But I would definitely suggest starting with the Pilots Association, since most of the pilots are local. Um, Catherine Slater Carr. So why don't we give the MCC a agenda? You can, you can bring it to the chair. All of, all of our contact information is on the website. Thank you. A um, couple things. Uh, Deborah, some years ago, I think it's going on 15 years ago, there was an attempt to redo the airport master plan. Uh, you might want to go to the county and get the copies of what was done. There was actually quite a bit of work done on that. I believe, however, the FAA rules have changed since then. I, can, I, I think I ran across some of those old documents, so I'll see what I can dig out. Um, mostly I wanted to, well, I'll start with, I am on the Midco, I'm sorry, I'm on the um, Montero Water and Sanitary District and the Sewer Authority Midco side board. Uh, going on a week ago, um, 10 days ago, I guess, we had a um, strategic planning session for Sewer Authority Midcoast side. It, Steve videotaped it. It is available to watch on um, Pacifica TV, and it was about <coughs> two hours or so, but I think you'd find it fairly interesting given the um, lawsuits and the problems that are going on. However, there was one brief section there where the two representatives from Half Moon Bay were talking about wanting to get rid of the Joint Powers Agency and have a single unified sewer system for the coast side, which would mean Granada would lose the primary function of, of its local government who has, um, to Chris's point, taken up trying to get parks and take care of the median strips and, and is a very active community resource and, and community active group. And the other is Montero 
what was Montero Sanitary District and um, is now Montero Water and Sanitary. Um, there would be severe financial consequences to both of those agencies because our property tax revenues come from the sewer district, our old sewer district functions. Um, Montero gets no water, uh, no property taxes for our water functions because those came only 15 years ago and the district itself was a pre-Prop 13 district and so we do have um, a small bit of um, property taxes that we can get. It, w it would be a very bad problem for the entire mid-coast. So I would ask people to um, keep an eye on this. Um, I don't know why Half Moon Bay wants to do that. Um, I have my reasons, but I'm on camera, so I'm not <laughs> going to um, go spouting my half-baked theories. But I, I do think that's something of great importance to um, the Mid-Coast because those are the only two agencies that represent only the people on the Mid-Coast. The others cover Half Moon Bay and, and other areas as well. S but the real reason I wanted to come up here is to thank the people on the Mid-Coast Council and the people who are coming in. Um, as Chris said, it's hard work. There's a lot to learn. Um, it makes the history of the people on the coast side even more interesting. It's the, the people of the mid coast are um, amazingly thoughtful, energetic, passionate people. We may not always agree because we are passionate, but that's how you get a better decision and that's how you get something that represents the community. And the amount of time and hours that people have donated in this room and in the council itself is awesome and, and it shows. Um, and I, I can't disagree with Chris in the least. Getting people involved is what makes our community the fabulous place that it is, is that it is. But when you were talking about people in the audience, there was, there's, there's one who does an enormous amount of time rescue at doing animal rescue here. There were two ex-MCC members in the uh, in there, and then there there was me. I've been on um, Montero Water and Sanitary, I think, 21 years. Um, maybe I I don't know. I'm bad with dates. I was on the council for a long time, but it's it's everybody you talk to. It's everybody who cares, and you just have to tell them come to these meetings. So Chris, I will, I will take your advice and I will start coming to these meetings. <laughs> I didn't realize people wanted to hear from me <laughs> anymore. But, these, but our, our community is, I, I, I'm repeating myself, but I just think it's very important for everybody to understand what makes our community such a great place is the people who are out cleaning up the roads, working. We have so many people volunteering on so many issues. And when I was chair of the council, there was another person on the council who got very upset, Chris, because we didn't have anybody coming to our meetings. Now, he was a professional entertainer, and I tried explaining to him that in government, you know you're doing a really good job when nobody shows up. <laughs> in entertainment, you know you're doing a really good job when everybody shows up. So they're, they're uh, somewhat different, but I'm sure you, and I know Deborah have, and, and others have had people come up to them when they're at Safeway or New Leaf or something, go, thank you for what you do. Mm -hmm. You really do make a difference, and, and you do, and our community benefits from this, so thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. All right, we have a point. one more really quick agenda item, and then we're on to the swearing in of the new member and uh, the two returning members. So, uh, do I hear a motion on the consent agenda to approve the minutes of our last meeting? I move, move to approve the um, consent agenda. Seconded? Along. No, I, not seconding it. Oh, we not. need to make a correction. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Uh, what is the correction? On uh, item number, was the round, uh, roundabout study? Yes. Uh, 
the action motion. Uh, we authorize payment not to exceed $3,952. Mm -hmm. And this is four thousand. Okay. And also, my name needs to be corrected. Okay, that will be corrected. Thank you. And now, second, okay. as amended. All right. We have a motion on the table to approve the minutes as amended. All in favor? Okay. Do we have a quorum? No. Yep, we have a quorum. I worried I would have called them back otherwise. <laughs> Carries four zero. Thank you. All right. Swearing in of our new council member. Michelle. You can do them all. You can do us all at once if you want. Yeah. Well, we have to appoint our officers or elect our new officers. But, uh, that, that and we have one more a payment for our uh, round of expert. <laughs> All right, it's going to be going. All right. It's a nice Thank, you. Bye. Bye. Thank you very much, Don. We appreciate your coming. for chair of the Mid-Coast Community Council. I'll make a motion that we nominate Claire Touton for chair. Do we have a second? A second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Carried unanimously. Thank you. Which means you now have to take charge of the next three officers. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do we have a nomination for vice chair? I will nominate Lynn Erickson. <laughs> he knows about it. He knows about it. <laughs> a 
second? I'd like to nominate. Wait a minute, we need a second. No, okay. he, he can nominate anybody else he wants. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'll nominate Barbara Matheson. <laughs> uh oh, Ta I withdraw my nomination. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Always free to turn down nominations. Okay. Thank so you, Dan. We, do we have any other nominations? Do we have any seconds? I'll okay. second. Okay. Then we have a move. I'm sorry, your chair. Why am I doing it? <laughs> <laughs> of course, I have it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's moved and seconded to. Uh, nominate or elect Len Erickson as vice chair. All in favor? We need a nomination for a secretary. I'll make a nomination that we uh, nominate Dave Olson for secretary. I'll second that. All in favor? Any, any other nominations? <laughs> yeah, all in favor? It's unanimous. And any, any nominations for treasurer? I will nom nominate Barbara Matthewson for treasurer. <laughs> Second. Thank you. Any other? Yeah, any others? <laughs> I nominate okay. Michelle Will <laughs> as secretary. Oh, I'm sorry, treasurer. Um, <laughs> I don't know what that entails. Is there a second for that? Seven checks in a year. Do you want to accept the nomination? <laughs> Don't have to. Um, yeah, I, I'll accept it if, if, <laughs> <laughs> so. If, 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 okay, if. well then we we'll vote on that. Okay, so first all in favor of Barbara Matthewson for treasurer? Am I allowed to vote? You're allowed yes, to vote. of course you're allowed. That's three. Okay, four, five. <laughs> All in favor of Michelle for treasurer? I guess I have to. Okay. All right, so, so Barbara is the new treasurer. Thank you for right. being willing. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Good. Then we have one more item on the agenda, and that's about uh, financing for the roundabout concept uh, design. Um, and Dave will let you present that. Right. So uh, when we first uh, voted funds for the concept design that uh, for the roundabout at the north end of Moss Beach, we allocated three thousand fifty-two and fifty cents, uh, and it turned out that the consultant required a couple of extra hours. He was billing us very inexpensively at one hundred fifty-five dollars an hour. So there is an additional payment due of $310. I think he has done an excellent job. I would suggest that we vote to pay him the extra $310. Is there anybody who wants to ask questions about it? Just a quick comment that um, I did vote against having him do the work for the California um, roundabout. But uh, having said that, you know, I do believe that we should make good with his account. And um, so I will vote in favor of um, the additional. Thank you. All right. Do you want to make the motion? Um, yeah, so I will move that we approve an additional sum of $310 to Michael Walworth for his work on the roundabout uh, conceptual design. Is there a second for that? I'll second it. All in favor? All right. All right. Council activity, anything that, that uh, you've been involved in that you want to report to? to? Um. <laughs> On December 1st, we, um, Chris, Lisa, and I did the Adopt a Highway. And it was uh, raining, the last part, pouring, but it was, uh, we got, I don't know, what would you say, about half of our area? The west side, the west side. Beach from North Bethel Lower down to Lancaster. Or Lancaster. Lancaster. No, Lancaster. East side. 
We had a great, even though we got wet, it was a lot of fun. We found a lot of interesting stuff. Um, and uh, in an hour and a half, we got probably about 80 pounds. The Caltrans uh, guys thinks we got between 80 and 100 pounds of garbage in that small area. So I would, we are going to try to do it again, um, possibly midweek. It might work better. Um, Maybe in the next couple of weeks, we'll put it out there when we're going to do it, but we'd love to have volunteers. It, the time went by really fast, and uh, I'm hoping we get our sign for the next time uh, the they're working on it. The camaraderie makes it fun. It, it really is. I know it's not a lot, but <laughs> so that's, that's it. Any other council activity? Um, I will report briefly on the uh, Loney Portola trail effort. Um, we had a uh, joint meeting yesterday of the preliminary feasibility design for all of the various uh, trail segments, and that's bicycle, pedestrian, equestrian, and automobile. Um, it's definitely well underway, um, so I think we will have parts of it open uh, for the 250th anniversary, and there will be a series of events leading up to it and on November 4th. So uh, all the effort from a lot of people all through the uh, various government agencies is paying off. I've attended a couple of the uh, planning sessions or, or work sessions for the Half Moon Bay Local Coastal Plan, which is coming to uh, a head at this point. Um, I think it's important to stay on top of what they're doing because it does affect us by, by ripple effect, if it, nothing else. I, in the, the next session is on development, so that might be worth uh, paying attention to. Any, and that's on December 19th. Anything else? Okay. Uh, future agendas. Uh, we will have a, a, an agenda to work on Highway 1 issues. We, we need to look at the report that we just paid for. Um, we want to talk more about the, uh, connect, uh, the uh, Adopt a Highway program. Seton Coastside is going to be coming up. I guess that's even more interesting now. Uh, there will be a retreat in January. The date hasn't been set yet, but we will be meeting to uh, make plans for the coming year. Anything else that people want to? mention as an agenda item? Uh, no, it's just worth mentioning that our regular meeting date of the 26th, two weeks from now, we will not meet because it's the day after Christmas. Okay. Anything else? Then we're adjourned. All right. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>